By now, many of you have heard from Uncut Hoops and others about how LeBron James tried to trade away Kyrie Irving right after Kyrie Irving was an instrumental role in the Cavaliers getting their first championship, which is just, it, it, it's crazy and yet not surprising. And I don't want to repeat what he said too much. Um, I would go and watch it if I were you. The reason I'm doing an episode on it is that there are a couple of things not mentioned in the uncut episode and some people have done reactions to it and I didn't hear them mention these things either. So I'm going to add my two cents. This came up because of LeBron James's propaganda podcast in which he tried to steal the spotlight from Kyrie's success in the playoffs by talking about himself and how, oh man, I wish I had Kyrie as my running mate which um, is, you know, it's pretty disrespectful to Anthony Davis. Uh, that point was made already. And I, I'll agree with that. Here's what they didn't say. LeBron, in his JJ Reddick podcast, says, I'm so proud of what Kyrie has accomplished. He was proud watching the journey that Kyrie's been on. When you say something like that, you're basically trying to insert yourself into the conversation, which obviously the fact that he did this at all, he was inserting himself into the conversation, but he's kind of trying to take credit for Kyrie's development and, and look at it as, oh yeah, that's, that's my kid and I helped him grow into the man that he became. And they pulled this father figure shit on Kyrie uh, early in the LeBron Kyrie partnership too, like or, like shortly after LeBron got there. And this reporter asked Kyrie, "Oh, what's it been like having uh, like a father figure of LeBron James on the team?" And Kyrie was taken aback, and I think he got criticized for his reaction, but I don't blame him. It's like. Am I hearing you correctly? I don't even understand the question. <laughs> he, he's not my father or a father figure. <laughs> yeah, it, looking back, like LeBron had barely gotten there and the media was trying to credit LeBron James for being, I guess, the leader of the team and bringing uh, all this greatness uh, to the Cavaliers. Uh, and Kyrie was balling his ass off before LeBron got there. If LeBron wants to say something about Kyrie, it should be thank you for driving the lane, drawing the defense, and throwing me lobs. Because most of LeBron's highlights throughout his career are cashing in on lobs from his excellent teammates. So moving on from the father figure crap, let's talk about Kyrie's departure from the Cavs which when he did that, I immediately was like, yeah, I don't blame you, and good. I don't want to see LeBron get carried by Kyrie anymore. Um, of course, you know, you guys know how I feel about LeBron James, so that's obviously a biased take on it. But without even knowing about the backstabbing that LeBron was doing, I already thought that Kyrie was justified. I mean, can you imagine playing with a dude who after Kyrie performed the way that Kyrie performed in the 2016 finals and hit not just that one shot that people talk about a lot, but multiple shots like that. Can you imagine that your teammate's mindset as he's looking around is, wow, that one right there made me the greatest of all time. Because that's what LeBron James said that he was thinking. When he goes on the shop to talk about how great he is and tells his cast of his friends who are only going to agree with him, no matter what he says, chooses that moment to tell the world that he's reflecting on the moment and what comes to his mind? I'm the greatest. Not, look how blessed I am. Look how wonderful it was to have Kyrie we did this as a unit. 
His mindset is, look how great I am. What a fucking piece of shit teammate. No thanks. No thank you. I'd rather lose <laughs> on a team without that guy than win with that guy. Holy crap. So, obviously, I, uh, you know, there was, there were problems in Boston, but even with those problems, if Kyrie hadn't gotten injured, I think that Boston could have, uh, knocked the Cavs out, uh, that following year. So I was very, very disappointed to see Kyrie, uh, uh, sit out in that matchup. But in addition to what I just said, apparently Kyrie was living with the knowledge that LeBron James tried to get Kyrie traded for Chris Paul and then also tried to get him traded for Paul George. Wow. 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 Anyway, that's all covered in the other uh, episodes, the original episode and the reaction episodes. But what those guys didn't mention and that I want to add on is... The fact that many of us didn't know about this and how much credit we should be giving to Kyrie for that. Because imagine the stink that Kyrie could have made. I don't know if he mentioned it at all. I feel like it would have been big news if he had. But again, most of us are only learning about this now even though Kyrie knew about it. So that means that Kyrie had the type of character to just quietly suffer and say, I can't be here anymore and I'm not going to announce to the world what this piece of shit did to me. It's just time for me to move on. You know, and as the years have gone on, it's become more common for people to release a stink bomb like that you know, the media can't wait to hear it. And no matter how disgusting or distasteful it is for someone to call out someone else, the media will praise you for it because they fucking love it. Kyrie didn't do it. God, can you imagine the temptation to expose what LeBron James did? That means Kyrie's character is light years beyond LeBron James. Can you imagine having to play with LeBron James and being a better person or a bigger man and always having everything be about LeBron James and that you guys are all second fiddle, even while that guy is basically gross? Second fiddle to someone you don't respect and who is generally a gross person. No thank you. And I would like to add that even in Kyrie's dark years, I guess let's consider... Boston and the Nets ears, even in his quote unquote dark years, he was doing amazing things. He was doing things that LeBron James has never done. And then there are the performances that he did have with the Cavaliers, which are just overshadowed by the media giving LeBron the credit for everything. It's unfortunate about the flat earth thing with Kyrie. You know, that alone makes me question him. That's, I, I, I don't know how you can believe something like that. <laughs> so it puts a hole in me, like, uh, praising his character. But with that aside, man. And, and of course, it doesn't help that uh, the Celtics are beating the piss out of the Mavericks. I would have liked to have seen uh Kyrie have more success in these finals and not just for Kyrie's sake but to avoid having to hear LeBron fans say dumb things which they are saying I've already seen it this is why Kyrie needed LeBron oh boy you, you're praising LeBron James when LeBron James has been sitting at home since April podcasting and you're talking about he's who Kyrie, who's in the finals, needed? That doesn't make any sense at all. But more than that, because this, this, this episode's more about character, 
What's LeBron James used his podcast for? To continue to shit on past teammates. To try and lift himself and make excuses for his shortcomings. What a piece of trash. Why would you ever want to be that guy's teammate? Anyway, I think that covers what I wanted to add to it. Um, obviously, go and listen to the originals if you want more details on it. Thank you for tuning in. Catch you on the next one.